There was recently a, a huge survey done and uh, the result of that survey was published and the title of uh, the survey into levels of anger in society today was, uh, was, it was called We Live in the Age of Rage. And it's true if you look around the world in general today in just about every country we see the levels of anger rising. I don't know what it's like for you, perhaps you're feeling a little bit grumpier, a bit more irritated each day and perhaps you're finding the levels of anger is rising where you work, where you live. Um, but the main question is why do we get angry? Why do we create this, uh, what's been called the incendiary emotion? And uh, the result of this particular survey uh, was, was very interesting. And there were two factors which were behind the cause of this exponential rise in, in anger. And, and the first, first factor was expectation. Uh, our expectations now are higher than ever before in, in all of history, uh, especially as we watch other people having their expectations met almost, uh, almost instantly. Uh, we're living in a time now when there's so much more that we can have uh, compared to previous generations, compared to our parents. We're living a time now when we can watch on TV uh, everyone else getting what they want. And so we want more, we expect more. And, and that combined with the second factor of speed. Uh, in a world which is getting faster by the day, driven by technology, we expect not just more, but faster. We expect to get what we want faster. And of course, when our expectations are not met uh, with speed, that's the moment we become a little irritated. Uh, and sometimes it's just going on a journey. We expect to get to our destination faster than the last time. We're in a new car, however, there's more traffic. And so uh, as the drivers in front get in the way, we become irritated because we're not meeting our expectation to make the journey so quickly. And of course, irritation, if we water that particular emotion that we create, turns into frustration and then that turns into, into anger. And this is the process by which we create um, our angriness in response to the world around us. And in that moment, um, most of us, we think it's okay, we think it's natural to, to be irritated, to be frustrated, to be a little angry at others. We think it's okay and we don't do anything about it. We think sometimes it's natural. And that's really because we've been taught three beliefs about anger, um, generally, which stop us from changing it. And the first belief is that um, <laughs> it's natural. It's okay. In fact, it's good to get angry sometimes. It's good to tell people how you feel, um, to share your emotion with them. Um, and that way, A, you get it off your chest, and, and B, if you tell them how you feel, it might change them. It might make them better. And, and so this belief that so many of us learn in society stops us from recognizing the anger, which is painful, which we create within ourselves, stops us from recognizing and changing it within ourselves. The second belief is um, perhaps the most prevalent belief in the world and, and that is it's not me that's making me angry. It's situations, it's events that happen around me, that's making me feel this way. But of course the truth here, which is quite hard for some to see, is that it's never me that makes me upset, it's how I'm responding to the world around me and that response is my responsibility. And so if I'm getting irritated, frustrated or angry with someone else, it means that it's as if I'm not taking responsibility for my ability to respond. I'm blaming someone else for how I feel, what I'm thinking and feeling about them. And in that moment, I'm saying, I'm not responsible, they are. The truth is, of course, I'm totally responsible for how I respond to anything and everyone in the world around me. And that's very freeing, that truth. That frees me to realize that I can change my feelings, I can change my response to what's going on around me. And so it's a, a liberation to live that truth. 
And the third reason why I think the levels of anger are rising in the world today is more to do with not so much a belief that we learn, but perhaps an addiction that we develop. And so many people now, and perhaps you have a little addiction to this particular emotion. And someone who's addicted to, to a little bit of anger every day kind of goes looking for the opportunity to become upset with someone or something. They go kind of looking for a reason to be offended by something. And that's because they've become accustomed to creating that little emotional hit, that little emotional burst within themselves every day. And, and that might be because physically, when we become angry, we create two chemicals in our body. One is called adrenaline and the other is called cortisol. And when we create these chemicals physically, then it's as if we become addicted to those particular chemicals coursing through our veins. And so we look for an excuse to become upset, angry, so we can create and experience these chemicals. And this is called emotional addiction. And what we see today now is addiction again, something which is rising in so many areas of our lives. And in this particular area, the area of our emotions, this particular emotion is one of our favorites. So the, the challenge is, how do we free ourselves from our addiction, from our habit of becoming angry? And uh, that takes us into a slightly deeper territory. Because really, why do I get angry? Anytime, anywhere. It's because I'm not getting what I expect. And that really means I'm not getting what I want, what I want. Why do I want anything that I want? Why do I want other people to do what I want them to do? Why do I want the new car, the new house, the holiday, the meal, the movie? Why do I want all those things? Because behind my wanting, I believe that when I get what I want, then I'll be happy, then I'll be at peace, then I'll be content in myself. But then what's the truth? What is the truth? Where does my peace, my contentment, my happiness really come from? Does it come from outside or from inside? And it's only when I learn to self-generate my own peace, self-generate my own happiness, only when I realize that what I really want doesn't come from outside, it comes from the ability to create it inside, then I can free myself from expectation, from desire, from wanting something from someone else. And when I'm free of desire, expectation, from the craving of anything, then I can never be disappointed. I can be free of disappointment and therefore free of the anger that usually follows disappointment as I look for someone to blame, someone to be responsible for my disappointment. And so the secret of freeing myself from the emotion, from the pain of anger, is simply to realize that whatever I want, I want because I'm looking for happiness, for peace in my life. And if I can find that, if I can learn to create that within myself, wherever I am, then I'm free of wanting, free of disappointment, I can be free of anger.